All right. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Justin Burnell. Um, so hopefully you've come to the right session. So if you're interested in medicine at Monash University, you're in the right session. Um, yeah, I'm the student recruitment manager for international um, in the Faculty of Medicine, Nursing, Health Sciences. Um, I've got about 15 minutes just to talk to you quickly um, about our medical programs. Um, what I would say is in 15 minutes, I, I'm not going to go through everything. So I'm not going to go through entry requirements and, um, you know, clinical placements and the student experience. The, the, uh, the purpose of this session and the session that you're joining um, is for me to give you a little bit of information um, about the interview process. And we call that the, uh, the MMI, which stands for multiple mini interview. Um, so with that in mind, um, I'll get started. And um, if you've got some questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, and we'll, we should have a little bit of time at the end just to talk about your questions um, in a bit more detail. Um, so just before we do go in, um, I probably should tell you a little bit about, um, you know, Modern Monash Medicine Nursing Health Sciences. Um, we're a bit unique um, in that we actually offer two different medical programs. So some of you in the audience um, today might be applying from high school. You know, you might be in high school and you're wanting to come into medicine. So that would be the direct entry medical program. Um, some of you that are listening in today may actually already be a university student. So if you're a university student and you're studying an undergraduate degree in something like science or biomedical science, then you're coming through our graduate entry program. Um, with Monash, we actually take a very integrated and interdisciplinary learning approach um, for our medical program. Um, what do we mean by that? It means that when you go through the program, um, you'll learn from a number of different medical professionals. Um, and you also study, you know, with other students like physiotherapy students as well in some cases. Um, extensive range of clinical placements. This is one of our key strengths. Um, so when you get to, you know, year two or year three, year four, um, in, the, in the graduate program, Monash will find all the clinical placements for you. And we've got a really extensive clinical placement program, the Alfred Hospital, the Monash Medical Center. We're building a hospital on our campus. So Monash will have a Victorian Heart Hospital on our campus very soon, um, which is extraordinary because I don't know there's too many other universities in Australia that have a, that have a government hospital on their campus. And just some of our rankings. So they're medicine um, number 36 in the world. So when we talk about all the medical schools in the world, Monash is ranked number 36 for medicine and anatomy and physiology. Um, so, you know, you're gonna do that a significant amount of anatomy and physiology as part of your course from rank number 37 in the world there too. All right, so for those of you that are in high school, I'll just give you a quick overview of the medical program that we have. So it's a doctor of medicine, which is actually a bachelor of medical science and a doctor of medicine. So it's an MD. Um, this is a five year program. Now, Monash is the only university in the state of Victoria that offers this medical program, direct entry from high school. Um, there is other universities that offer medicine in Victoria, but they'll only offer it as a graduate entry program. So this makes Monash unique that we offer, you know, high school students the opportunity to come straight in from high school and study medicine from day one. And it's a five year program. So this course, it actually uses your your high school qualification grades, um, an ISAT, and down the bottom here, an MMI for interview. So each of these criteria, your high school results, your ISAT, and your MMI, they're all worth one third each in the selection process. And chemistry and English are the two prerequisite subjects for direct entry medicine. So this course, as I said, is only for high school students. If you're in a Canadian university at the moment, um, and you've started an undergraduate degree, you're not eligible for this program. You would apply for our other medical program, which is graduate entry. Um, but direct entry medicine, we have about 70 international places each year. Um, we can see down the bottom here, we probably get about 700 applicants for direct entry medicine. So 700 students applying from high school all around the world. Um, and you can see we, we only can interview 175. So you need to be very strong in the ISAT because to be invited for interview, we'll look at your ISAT score where you need a score of at least 170 in the ISAT to be invited for interview. 
Then if you're one of the successful shortlisted applicants that gets to interview, um, you can see we'll take 70 of those students each year internationally. We do also have a large cohort of domestic Australian students. We take in about 240 domestic students. So in total, there's over 300 students in the cohort, um, but about 70 places for international. Now, you may be listening in here um, from your home in Canada, or if you're at university today in your university, you might be thinking, Justin, I'm not in high school. I've already finished high school. What's the pathway for me? So for students that are currently enrolled in a undergraduate degree in Canada, this is the program for you. This is the direct, uh, sorry, this is the graduate entry medicine program, um, which is also a bachelor of medical science and a doctor of medicine, but it's four years. So the first year of this program is campus-based where you do your anatomy and physiology. And the remaining three years are taught in the clinical learning environment. So in the hospital system, so this one's different to direct entry medicine in that the entry requirements for graduate entry medicine, you need a GPA of at least six out of seven. So we'll look at your undergraduate academic record and we'll use that to invite you for interview. So the MMI stands for multiple mini interview. And you'll also do a situational judgment test at the same time, which is like a scenario based um, assessment test that Monash does internally. So students applying for graduate entry medicine at Monash must come from a biomedical science or a degree that has significant biomedical science content. So that could be, you know, areas like genetics, um, it could be anatomy, biochemistry, uh, immunology, microbiology, pharmacology, just to name a few. Um, the reason why we require students to come from a biomedical science background is because we do not have an MCAT or an or a GAMSAT requirement. So there's no MCAT, no GAMSAT requirement for Monash. We will select you for interview based on your, your GPA. So you, this is a minimum. You may need a lot higher depending on how, you know, the number and quality of applicants. Um, and then if you're invited to the interview, um, we will use a combination of your academic record and your interview score to select you for admission. So there is no MCAT or no GAMSAT requirement for entry. Um, to give you the numbers, um, so for graduate entry medicine, we have about 400 applicants each year. So 400 applicants from around the world, not, not from Canada. Obviously, Canada is an important you know, cohort of students for us, but these students can come from Singapore, Malaysia, Canada, USA. So there's a number of different countries we recruit from. Um, we interview probably 75 of those students um, each year and then we only have 20 places in graduate entry medicine so you can see the process is always competitive whether or not you're coming from direct entry from high school or whether or not you're entering graduate entry medicine as we can see here on the screen um, because that entry is competitive it means you need to be strong in the multiple mini interview if you're invited because you can see from an interview stage um, you know, the odds of getting in, you need to be strong in the interview because we're using your interview score and your GPA to select you for admission. So hopefully today I'll talk to you a little bit more um, about the interview process, um, just so that you're aware of what you need to be prepared for. Um, okay, this example on the screen, um, this is for students that are coming from direct entry. So you can see here I've used the example of direct entry medicine. Um, you've got to remember, because we have two medical entry points, I'm, I'm sometimes talking about direct entry medicine and sometimes talking about graduate entry medicine, um, but the interview process is exactly the same. Whether or not you're applying for direct entry medicine or graduate entry medicine, the interview process is exactly the same, um, or the interview, um, the way we conduct the interview, I should say. So if we use this example, um, you know, you need to have your year 12 results and your ISAT. Um, and your interview is worth, you know, one third um, of the selection criteria. Now, all the interviews at the moment, um, we actually conduct them online. So the interviews that we used to um, do before we had the pandemic, um, we actually used to come to Canada and interview in person. Um, we, we don't obviously, we can't obviously do that at the moment. So at this stage, the interviews are always held online um, using an online platform such as Zoom. Um, and you can see here, these are the types of things that we're looking for in the interviews. So the interviews are not so much a one-on-one -on -one interview where we're asking, why do you want to do medicine? 
what do you like about medicine? It's, it's not so much like a job interview. Um, it's what we call um, a scenario-based um, set of interviews. So the key sort of criteria that we're looking for um, to select the right students is we'll be looking at your communication skills. So when we're talking to you through interview, how well can you communicate, um, you know, back to the interviewer? We'll be looking at your motivations. Um, we'll be looking at how you critically think through a scenario. Um, you know, do you have empathy? Do you have ethical reasoning? We'll be looking at those. Uh, can you collaborate, work in a team? Um, and advocacy. So, you know, if you've got a, a point, how well can you put that point across? How well can you hold an argument and construct an argument? Um, how well can you support your, your point of view? So these are the kind of the key criteria you need to remember and, and different interview scenarios um, will be posed to you. And, you know, some of them may focus on your communication skills. Some of them may focus on your advocacy. So um, it's just important to keep those in mind um, when you're going through the interview process. Um, one thing I would say, a lot of students, they'll often ask me, oh, Justin, can you give me some examples um, of the interview questions or have you got any past questions um, that you can provide to me? Uh, what I would say is these are what we call scenario-based interview questions, which means you're given a scenario. It's probably think better to think of it as I'm going to be given a scenario and not a question. And the reason why I like to sort of phrase it that way with the students is because when you're given the scenario, what we mean by that is there's no right or wrong answer um, to that scenario. Um, it's up to you to provide an answer to that scenario. Um, and because there is no right or wrong answer, it's really how you respond to that scenario, how you apply these different um, criteria to the scenario. So I'll give you an example, and, and this isn't an, an example we use in the tests, um, but it's kind of, if I give you an example, it should get you thinking um, about how you can answer the question. So a, a possible scenario you could be given with a multiple mini interview is that um, a, a, you've, you've got a dog, um, for example. So you've got a dog. Um, your dog has arthritis. Um, you've taken your dog to the vet um, and the vet has given you two options. Um, because the dog has arthritis in its paw, um, the vet has, has said to you, well, you've got two options. We can put the dog down um, or we can um, give the dog some medicine and some treatment um, and the dog can live a little bit longer. Um, which option do you want to choose? So that may be the scenario that you're given and you're given that scenario and you need to give an answer back to the, the person that's interviewing you. So you can see there's no right or wrong answer to that question. Um, however, there is what we call good answers and bad responses. So a bad response may be, um, oh, you know, I, I, um, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of animal cruelty. So I just want to put the dog down. I don't want, I don't want the dog to be in pain. So if you can, you know, um, put the dog down without any pain, I, I would like to do that. That would be a bad answer because you haven't really gone into any detail. Whereas a good answer might be you questioning, asking questions back of the vet. So you might say, um, okay, if I decide to let the dog live a little bit longer, how much longer do you think um, that the dog will live? If I decide to let the dog live a little longer, um, what sort of quality of life will they have? Will they still be able to eat? Will they still be able to drink? Will they still be able to urinate and go to the toilet? Uh, will they still you know, appreciate human affection? Um, so that would be a good answer. You're kind of, you know, you're rationalising, you're communicating um, and you're going through all the different, you know, processes. So just think that's the kind of question that you'll get and you've got to think about the answer. Remember, there's never going to be a right or wrong answer um, to these scenarios. Now, remember, if this was graduate entry medicine, the selection criteria wouldn't be, you know, year 12 and ISAT. It would be your undergraduate degree, which would be your bachelor degree in Canada. Um, and that would be worth 40%.
And then if you got to the multiple meaning interview, that would actually be worth 60% for graduate entry medicine. So I hope that makes it clear. Sorry, I haven't put a graduate example up here on the screen, um, but that would be graduate entry medicine. Um, and just before I do finish up and we go into questions, um, I just thought I'd go through how the multiple mini interview works. Um, so there's actually, for international students, you'll actually have four different interview stations. So think of it here, this is number one. So you'll come in, you'll have your first interview station. Um, then you'll have your second interview station. So you can see at each station, you've got about eight minutes to answer an interview question. So you'll come into the first station and you'll be given a scenario such as the scenario I've just given you, except it won't be that scenario, it'll be a different scenario. Um, and you'll have two minutes uh, to read that scenario and gather your thoughts. And then you'll have eight minutes of interview. So really it's 10 minutes, two minutes to read, and then eight minutes to do your, you know, you'll provide a response to that particular scenario. So you'll have 10 minutes at station one, um, then you move on to station two and you'll do exactly the same. So you'll have two minutes and another eight minutes to respond. And then at station three, two minutes and eight minutes and so on till you get to station four. So you can see a circuit will take you about 40 minutes to complete. Um, and yeah, you'll go back and forth with the interviewer. And remember, there's no right or wrong answer, but what we're looking for is how you communicate um, how you show empathy or reasoning. You, you may get a, a question that's ethical. You know, there's an ethical issue in there. Um, it might be about your friends um, and you've got to decide whether you want to loan a car to a friend um, when you haven't asked your girlfriend. You know, things like this. There's always going to be some sort of um, problem and that's never going to be a right or wrong answer, but we just want to see how you process um, your answers and how you you know, respond to the different scenarios that we do give you. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. What I might do, um, I've gone through that very quickly because we only had about 15 minutes. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen just so that I can see your questions. Actually, I might leave it up how it is now. Um, I've got about a minute left. Okay, some of these questions are quite long. I'll just... Okay, so Vija, I think I've answered that question. What is the number of procs international applications for direct entry? Um, so the, the proc number of applications was 700. That was on the screen. And we shortlist about, um, you know, 150 for interview. Match for residency. Um, yeah, look, these questions, uh, what I might do, it's gonna take me probably too long. I'll leave my email address here because yeah, I'll put it in here and you can email me because I understand. Okay, I've just put my email address because I'm not sure I'm going to be able to answer these in a minute. Um, the SJT, the SJT and the multiple, the one thing I would say, Tanya, thank you for the question. The one thing I would say about the SJT, um, how much is it worth for the selection process? It's, worth, it's, it's combined with the MMI. So really the MMI and the SJT are, are equivalent to 60%. So 60% for the SJT and the MMI, and then 40% um, for the uh, GPA. Um, all right, I'll stop sharing. Um, Sarah, was there any time left or are we pretty much done? <laughs> We're pretty much done. Um, yeah. If anyone does have any more questions, I definitely encourage you to head back to Career Echo and ask any questions. And Justin's put his email there. So if you do have any other questions, direct them um, to that email address. But um, yeah, we do have another presentation happening. So um, head back to Career Good point, Echo. Sarah. Oh, you lost your, we lost your sound. I can't hear you. Perfect. We're going to head back to Career Echo. Um, thank you so much for um, telling us all about um, the MMI and everything about Monash. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you back in Career Echo. Thank you so much.